Hey, and today we are going to learn how to create a picture like this, which is a picture in picture or a collage. And we're going to create this in a program called GIMP. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, in order to create a picture like this, you're obviously going to need a background and then a uh, smaller picture that you're gonna be putting in as, the, as one point of subject. And so what we're gonna do today is use these two pictures, this one here and this one here. And um, that day we went out, the reason we had helmets on was because my family went out bike riding on Coronado Island out here in San Diego. And I, was, I took this picture and I also took this uh, background picture, and I could have put my family right in the in in here as well. But I liked some of the background that was already here with the palm trees and whatnot. So how do you get both pictures in the same picture? So that's what we're going to learn today, and we're going to be using GIMP. Now GIMP is a uh, free software. It's open source, so you can download it, and you're allowed to and and use it. Uh, it, it works on both the Mac and the PC. And it's similar to Photoshop. It uses layers, it uses masking. It has a lot of uh, functionality of Photoshop, but the one big distinction obviously is it's free. So go ahead and download it. I'll put a uh, link so that you can get to it easily, but search for GIMP, G-I-M-P on the internet and you should be able to find it. All right, let's go ahead and open up uh, the background picture. And that is gonna be this, this is the background right here. And there's a couple of different ways you can open up things in GIMP. One is to actually go through the file up here. All right, and let me zoom in. And you, you go from file and then go to open. And that will that's one way to get to your pictures. Another way is I found that uh, there's a, a window here where you just take the picture that you want, like the background one here, and just drop it right in. And that to me is a lot easier. And then what you want to do is open up the second picture. Now, um, all you need to do to get that done is just take the second picture and drag it right on top. And what you'll notice is over here on the right, let me zoom in on that, is there are um, two layers. There's the front picture and then there's the background picture. And it, the way that layers work is it's sort of like pages of a book. Whatever's on top is what you're going to be able to see. If it's smaller, just like in this case, you can see both the front and the back. But if you, let me go ahead and do that. If you drag one of these layers underneath the other layer, like I'm about to, and I drop it, look what's happened over here. You no longer can see the family picture because it's hidden, all right? So that's how layers work. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this back up to the top. Now, there are a couple of things that you might wanna to do to the uh, family, the subject matter picture, the front picture, right? And one of them is you might want to actually change the, the cropping on this. So let's say the picture was too large, you didn't like how it looked, you can always crop it. And in order to do that, there's a tool over here. It looks like an X-Acto knife right there. Let me go ahead and zoom in on it. And the X-Acto knife is the crop tool. So once you find that, you click on that, and you'll get some options over here on the left. Once you get the crop tool, all you do is you drag um, the cursor, which looks like a little X, right over the subject. Let's just say like that. Okay. And now you have um, a preview of what it's going to look like. Now it looks like my helmet's being cut off a little bit, so I'm going to go to this line here, and I'm going to raise it a little bit. And let's say that I want to remove the left side over here. A little, oops, let's, let me redrag that. Sometimes if you get outside of it, it thinks you want to do a recrop again. So just move it, move it like that. Oh, let's do, fix that helmet thing right up again. Another way is to get your cursor in the corner, and you can uh, affect two sides at the same time like that. So for the sake of this one, uh, I want to keep those palm trees up in the top there. Maybe that palm tree off to the left, just like that. And I think the bottom looks good, and that looks good. So then I'm going to hit return on my keyboard. Boop. And it's now cropped. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to move it, and there's a couple of different ways to do that. Over here, there is something that looks like a cross with arrows on it, right there, okay? And that will allow you to move it, so let's go ahead and click on that, and I'm just going to put my cursor in the middle here and drag it, and notice that what I'm doing, what I'm paying attention to as I dragged it just a few seconds ago, is I'm paying attention to that corner. 
So the corner of the picture, I, you know, I want to kind of even it out. I don't want it to be um, too high or too low or whatever, whatever looks good to you. And uh, once I get that corner in there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this. And to scale it, there is um, another tool. It looks it's over here. Let me go ahead and get to the center of that. That's the scale tool on GIMP. And when you click on that, you get some um, other, other adjustments you can make. In order to use this, you just click in the middle and you'll get this dialog box. I want to show you a really important icon that you really need to make sure you've got turned on. And that is this little chain link. If this is linked, then the aspect ratio of the X and the Y axis will um, stay constant with each other. If you unlink that, then you can shrink one and the other one will, won't move. That's a problem because then the picture starts to look really weird and wonky. So make sure if it's unclicked, it'll look like that. You want to make sure it's clicked and everything will be good. Okay. So now that you've done that, and you can just set that window off to the side, you can then grab these little uh, um, squares. Just put your cursor inside the square right there, and then you can drag it to the size. Now, this picture is a little bit large, so I'm just going to take a first drag and see how it looks. Um, maybe there, for the sake of the demonstration. I'm going to let go. I'm going to hit scale. And that's what it looks like now. Now I'm going to bring it up just a little bit because I want to, there's still a lot of white space. So I'm going to click on there again, get my cursor inside there. And once again, scale it. And I think right about there it gives, it sort of like underlines those red kayaks. And then I'm, I can either hit scale or I can hit return on the keyboard. Boom. And there you have it. There's one last thing that you need to do in order to save this out. Um, and that is you go up to file and go to uh, export as and when you go to export as you're going to get a dialog box um, it's going to op give you the option to change the name up here so I'm going to change it from those whole bunch of numbers to um, I don't know I'll say uh, family outing and then I'm going to decide where I want it to go in this case I want it to go to my desktop and then I'm going to um, say export and then it, it gives you some options of, oh yeah, it gives you some options of the quality. Now, the, the higher the quality, and I almost always go to 100%, almost always go to 100%, unless you know you're going to save it for just uh, Facebook or the web, uh, then you can, you can reduce this a whole lot. And you really can't see uh, a big difference, but it does make a difference on the file size. So if you're going to send something through the email and you want it to be a um, smaller file size because it's just really large, you can reduce this and experiment with it. It's um, You have to go pretty low for it to actually degrade to the point where people can actually start to see it on the web. Now, if you're going to go and print the thing, you're going to send it somewhere to print it, um, then you're going to want to have it at the highest quality you possibly can. And I know this particular picture isn't very large, so keeping it at 100% is not a big deal. And then you click the export, and then it's exported onto wherever you decided to export it. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, I hope that taught you a way. And by the way, you can add more and more pictures onto this particular collage. So if you had a lot of um, white space, just like on this one, where on, on this particular one, I could put maybe another picture right here, right? Uh, you can add other pictures and be really creative about it. Uh, the one thing that you want to do beforehand is make sure as you take that background picture that you uh, compose it in a way that you have space for your other pictures as you bring them in. Okay, once again, hope that was helpful for you and uh, showed you a way to do a picture-in-picture -picture using the application GIMP. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my videos because that way you won't miss out on any of the other uh, photo goodness that I bring on, on the videos anyhow. And head on over to my website at pocketlenses.com to learn more ways to take great and make great pictures with smartphones and compact cameras. All right, talk to you later.